Uh, it's Max Obasheski uh, with the uh, Pledge of Resistance Baltimore. We're out here in uh, Mount Vernon. The Washington Monument is to my right. And everybody knows this, but just in case, our Washington Monument was before the one in D.C. And we come here every first Thursday, probably been doing this since 04, protesting the wars and also the uh, spending on wars. Devastating to a city like Baltimore when you have mayoral debates and one of the issues is closing of rec centers. And that's tragic. We have so much poverty in this city and you're closing rec centers? Poverty breeds crime. The lack of jobs we have in this, in this uh, community? You know, you've been here much longer than I have. All the manufacturing jobs have departed. Uh, we have a service industry. In many cases, they're not living wage jobs. So the Pledge of Resistance uh, joined up with the uh, Fund Our Communities Coalition. It started in Montgomery County. And Gene Athey was the uh, lead organizer with uh, Peace Action Montgomery. And I was actually at her house when a gentleman came from Massachusetts and said, this is the time now to talk about cutting military spending. And in, in my time as an activist or as even a human being, a person, to me, I've never seen a discussion like this that's going on, where you have Barney Frank and Rand Paul and Ron Paul and others talking about cutting the military budget. So Fund Our Communities in the state of Maryland is hoping to have five town hall meetings talking about taking out 25% of the military budget and putting that money into the cities and communities. I could go on for an hour and tell you what we need here in Baltimore. We have a tunnel where radioactive waste could go through, where toxic waste could go through, where we had an explosion, shut down the downtown the bridges in this community. Water mains are breaking every day. And, and the biggest concern right now, besides poverty, is this lack of jobs in our community. Imagine if we had green jobs. Imagine if this money was, instead of being used to bomb Libya or Afghanistan or Iraq, imagine if that money came back here and hired people to start rebuilding this infrastructure. I had two water mains in my neighborhood go out about three months ago. Two water mains. And we're talking of water mains that have probably been there 70 years. It's inevitable. I have an engineering background and everybody knows you do maintenance. You do maintenance on equipment. You don't wait till it fails because it inevitably it costs much more money if you're going to try to repair something rather than doing maintenance ahead of time. So, on so when's that day? Right, on, uh, it's a Monday, September 26th. We're going to be gathering at the Episcopal Cathedral, 7 to 9 p.m., the Episcopal Cathedral. The Cathedral of the Incarnation is at University Parkway and North Charles Street. And we're bringing in an economist. We've invited Barney Frank, Keith Ellison. We've invited the three local Congress people, Cummings, Sarbanes, and Ruppersberger. We've invited the mayor. We've invited the mayor of city council. We've invited, and also invited Jim Kraft, because Jim Kraft was working with us when the U.S. Conference of Mayors was here, and he was one of the people that got the uh, resolution passed in Baltimore City, calling for cutbacks in military spending, bring the money home. Is he on the city council? He's on the city council, yes. Uh, he was very good when he spoke at our teaching on uh, June 17th down at the Inner Harbor. Very, very good. Was making all the right connections, basically what I'm saying. How are we going to save this city? We used to have Jobs with Peace. Years ago, I was on the board of Jobs with Peace, and it was calling for cutbacks in military spending. I'm still waiting for the peace dividend. I never saw the peace dividend, but that's what we were talking about, using that money putting it into the cities and states. Uh, I, I, I've been listening recently about calls to <laughs> eliminate FEMA by the Libertarians, calling it elimination of FEMA, and 
I've been to Vermont on a number of occasions. It's a lovely state. Brattleboro is one of the most beautiful cities I've ever been to. And that poor state, and it's a poor state basically, it's a small state in the sense of number of people. And it's the worst flood, as I understand, worst natural disaster they've had in maybe a hundred years. And how can that state take care of itself? I mean, I know people, I was in a meeting last night, this was the Physician for Social Responsibility. Uh, Dr. Dick Humphrey and his wife, Laura Lee, they don't have electricity. We know so many people right now, after a pussycat of a hurricane, I read, yet the number of people without electricity right now. And the front page of the Baltimore Sun, I used to work for the Pennsylvania Electric Company, and I know a little bit about the difficulties in getting You don't get those lights. Time. You don't get the, the, they're, they're dangerous. Exactly. And the idea, I can, I know that if I was without electricity, I'd be yelling, belly aching, and so on. But realistically, this is something. It's labor intensive. You got to go out there. Exactly. It's dangerous. Right, right. You got line people. Uh, uh, why don't you put the put the lines underground? Is one of the discussions that's taking place right now. Well, that's that's something we got to talk about. Uh, also, one of the great fears. I'm going to a Crab Shell Alliance uh, meeting tonight. One of the great fears we had was the nuclear plants. First, we have an earthquake, and there's a. There's a Port Anna nuclear plant right near the epicenter of the earthquake. One of the Calvert Cliffs plants went offline. Uh, I don't know what's going on with uh, Yankee Atomic in Vermont because that is scheduled to be closed down. I don't know if it was affected. There's, a, there's Fort Calhoun, it's in Nebraska. It's still not online. Nebraska was one of the places you had all of that flooding months ago. So there's, a, there's another grave danger when we have these natural disasters. Imagine what happened in Fukushima, where you had an earthquake and a tsunami. And it, who knows when that is ever going to be settled. I have no idea. They said it'd be 20 years before people could come back there. Exactly. At least 20 years or so, more. So we were very, very fortunate because we had a mild earthquake here, very, very mild, yet there was damages here. And also, what followed was a hurricane. The hurricane eventually became a Category 1. Imagine if it was a 4 or something like that. What might have happened to these new plants? So, again, that's another issue we're working on very, very much. Put the money into green renewable sources. Obviously, we can't simply close down the nuclear plants, as Germany is going to be doing. We have to have gradual gradual closing down of the nuclear, build no new ones, deal with the nuclear waste, eventually close them down, and depend on renewable sources, the sun, the wind, uh, and so on. Thanks so much, Max. No problem at all, Bill.